Alright, hello everyone and welcome back to Kudabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at yet another wonderful mod, this time in the form of Indicator Lights, which is being made by forum user Snark. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is two things. The first being a lovely new attachable LED light that you can chuck onto any part in the game and of course can customize it with color, etc. A lovely little part, not too dissimilar from other light mods we have had a look at in the past, but what makes this really special is part two of the mod, and that's the fact that it takes stock parts from the game, such as command pods, docking ports, etc., and adds onto them LED lights. And now these LEDs aren't just for providing light or looking cool, no, in fact, they actually provide you with convenient easy information about those parts, and that just makes me happy. So let's jump right on into the VAB first and have a gander at the lovely new LED light that we have added in, and you just need to go down to Utility and grab one of these BL-01 indicator lights. And this is the lovely LED. As you can see, it's a fairly large thing here if we zoom in. Uh, let's see, compared to the hatch, it's uh, fairly sizable. And of course, if you right click, you can see that we have the pretty typical light interface here, being able to turn it on or off and then control its color. Now, of course, what's fun is you don't have to actually right click to turn this on or off. You can, in fact, go to an action group and add it into here, which is always convenient. So you can have a one through 10 uh, to be able to turn on and off all sorts of lights on your ship, which is just, it's just convenient and fun. And of course you can change the color. We can also, what I find very impressive is change the mode. Now by default, it's on continuous. So this light is simply always on, but we can change it to blinking. And I've been having a lot of fun with the blinking lights because we can actually control how fast it blinks. You notice that once we switch to blinking mode, we have two new bars here. The first being milliseconds on and the other being milliseconds off. So we can control how, li how long rather the light is on or off. And it's by default set to 500 milliseconds, but we can uh, turn the light down. So the light's only on for a brief 150 milliseconds. And and then it's off, say, for a thousand milliseconds, and it's a very just slow blinking, or of course we could bring it down and make that thing just go crazy. It's entirely up to you. I really do like that level of customization on the blinking of this light. It, uh, it's one of those little things that just makes me happy. And well, that's really all we can talk about on this particular light. So on to the parts that actually get LEDs added. Now, I've got a ship on the launch pad that will go through all of them, but I'll give you just a quick little brief on them, because we have things such as command pods. If we right-click the command pod, we have these crew LEDs, which we can turn on and off here. This can also be added to an action group to be toggled on and off manually. And you'll notice we have these three little dots on the hatch right here, and that is what these crew LEDs are. And they will actually show you which seats in the craft are taken and by what profession. It's pretty cool. We also have LED lights added to things like the Convertotrons here, which are right over here, and the color of the light will tell you which fuel it's producing. Similarly, with the fuel cell, it will tell you the status of it. We have fun things like on crew cabins, a similar thing to the crew command pods, where it'll show who's in there, which seats are taken. You can see the lights there and there. And even things such as dot Docking ports, batteries, etc. They all have lights, and it's just it's just convenient. And you can actually see the light on on this one already. Unfortunately, this one's not toggleable. Not all of them are. Uh, for instance, down here, the Convertotron, we cannot toggle it on or off because it's only on or off when it's in use. But things like the command pods, uh, let's grab a random docking port real quick. These can be turned and toggled on and off, and it's just convenient and nice. Now, as for the information that these provide, well, we need to go out to the launch pad for that, where I have made a monstrosity of a ship, 
Which, if we go here and fly it... Oh, God. This thing would never fly. And if it did, it'd probably fall apart very quickly. And let's actually accelerate time until it gets a bit more dark out. We don't want it to be completely night so you can see parts, but... I think right there should be perfect. Uh, a little bit darker than I was hoping, but still nonetheless. Now, as you can see, I've got a variety of LED lights on here, which are, you know, just blinking away or have their lovely colors. And a couple of them I have added to action groups, so I can toggle them on or off with hitting one. As you can see, apparently I only did the red ones and the blinking ones and forgot the green and the blue ones. But oh well, there we go. We can toggle those on or off. Now, the first one we're going to talk about here, because I'm kind of going to follow along with the player guide mainly so I don't tell you guys anything wrong and uh uh, yeah, I just don't want to screw this up. But yes, there is a player guide that is in the forum post for this, which makes it very convenient for telling you how all this works and what all it does. So we will start, first and foremost, with batteries. Now, as you can see, we've got quite a lot of electrical batteries here. That is a very weird way to put it, but yes, it's true. And you'll notice that they are all currently green with lights, which is always a good thing because that means you are over 70% charge. But if we actually turn on our hyper edit and go to miscellaneous tools, we can turn down the electric charge until it's at between 30 to 70%. And as you can see here, it is now yellow. Now, if we go under 30, it goes to red. And if it's under 3%, it pulses red. Let's see if I can actually get it at 3%. Oh, yep, there we go. You can see this slight pulsing to it, and that is telling you that, oh god, you have 3% energy left or less, and you're screwed, so you better get some power. And of course, if there's zero power, it's just off, because, well, there's no power to save you. So let's bring that back up to full because we're going to need the power for later. Oh boy. And go down to fuel cells. And the fuel cell isn't exactly anything too spectacular. You just turn it on and it has that green indicator light showing that it is indeed on. And that's really all it is to it. So let's actually just turn those off because, well, I don't need them creating power for us at the moment. So pretty simple. Just a light to show you that it is functional which is good because it'll remind you that oh crap I still have that thing on over there and I don't need it to be on so it'll help you with management of your ship now the next is reaction wheels I think I can actually turn that off uh, completely now I think I only needed it for the electricity well famous last words I'll probably need it for something else but on the reaction wheels as you can see here again we have green indicator lights now when they are green it's just things are normal now watch when I hit SAS they're still on but they get brighter if you turn them off actually I guess technically that means the LED is off but it it still is very visible of a thing, so I kind of consider it maybe low power, but with R, hitting it on to turn on the SAS, it goes on bright green. When you have just SAS mode, it will be on uh, yellow. When it is on pilot only mode, it will be on blue color, and that's how you change between these things, which is always quite good. So you can, you know, turn them on and off, and the different colors will tell you different things. And when the, uh, if you haven't used SAS in a while, so if we actually leave this for a while, trust me, it's a while of no player input, these will actually dim back down because there hasn't been any SAS input in a while. And, well, they'll start blinking brightly if electricity is deprived while they're turned on. So if they aren't getting enough electricity to power the SAS, it'll warn you that, hey, come on, we need more power. So that's always a good thing there. Now, as for the docking ports, we've got them over here as well. You can see that we have a variety of LEDs on them, both on the facing end of the docking port, as well as on the sides on the large one. On the smaller one, it's just those four points, and on the even even smaller ones still, it's just the two. And they will by default be green if they're, you know, ready to go and the crossfeed is enabled. If we disable the crossfeed, the lights are still on, so it can still be used as a docking port, but it will go red, showing that the crossfeed 
is turned off. Now, unfortunately, I didn't build anything to test and show this, but after you undock, these will also pulsate uh, whatever color they are until your ship is far enough away, basically showing you that you're disengaging from the docking port and you're good to go. And then once you're far enough away, the docking port can reset itself. It will go back to a solid color. So if you're trying to dock and it's blinking, well, you're not gonna be able to. So keep that in mind. Now the next is the crew indicators, and for that I've built a small little tower of some parts, but it fits for most anything that carries crew in it should be compatible, but I've just added a few onto here, and if I actually toggle these on with two, there you go, we, you can see that we did have lights come up on a variety of these different bits and bobs, and what you have is lights showing which seats are taken, and if there's no one in that particular seat, that light will go off. So right now in, say, this habitat container, all four seats are filled, and we have different colors for different professions. Now the orange, which uh, is that color there, which actually, yeah, I mean, it's kind of orange, but like a really light orange to me, at least. Maybe I'm a little colorblind, who knows? And that indicates a pilot green, indicates an engineer, blue is a scientist, and white is a tourist, which I gotta admit, I don't know how exactly you get tourist, but um, maybe, maybe that's a career mode thing and I rarely ever play career. But yeah, so that shows who is in what seat and that is always good. Now you will notice on the processing lab that we have a blinking light right there. It is blinking orange because of course, there's a non-scientist in that seat. It is blinking orange because there's a pilot there rather than the scientist that should be in there. So if there is a person who's not in the correct seat they need to be in, it'll blink. Now, when the lab is actually researching, the scientist lights aboard will pulsate very brightly. So it'll be very similar to pulsating of the uh, batteries over here when they were pulsating red, but it'll be pulsating blue for the scientist when they are actively working. So let's actually start some research there. And as you can see, the blue light is pulsating, which is just quite nice and convenient. Now, as for the next part, we have the ISRU units, which we use for converting things. And this, Ah, the different colors on this one are quite important. If we go to, say, do mono repellent, as that's the container I have up here, you'll notice a yellow light comes on, and that is showing that it is active and it is producing mono propellant. We can turn that off, and if you're doing liquid fuel and oxygen, this blue light, or actually it's more of a cyan color, that comes on. If you're doing liquid fuel, if we stop that, liquid fuel only will be green light right here. And finally, if you're doing oxygen, it will be this blue light on the end, or oxidizer rather. And it's just a simple on off at the moment. So it's, uh, you know, just if it's whichever one it's doing, you will know. And again, very similarly with the fuel cells, it's just a good indicator because you can visually see, oh crap, I don't mean to have this thing on right now. Let's turn it off. Or if, you know, maybe perhaps you're not meaning to do two or three at a time and you realize, uh oh, I should probably turn this thing off immediately. And there you go. You're fine. Now, uh, the mod maker is hoping to add other sort of indicators to this, very similar to like, say, the science research or the pulsating red for low battery to give you different indications. But for right now, it's just a standard on off. And if we go to the smaller unit, it is exactly the same over here, just the different colors for the different materials. And yeah, those are the LED lights. I absolutely love these different indicators, especially for the crew, as it's just... It's just nice, so you know, you can get out a crew man, and there we go, his light is off now, as you can see right there, but we know that we still have three other people on the inside. It's just convenient. I think that's my favorite part, is the crew lights. It's just, 
It's just cool. And of course, if we have him bored, oh boy, the camera went really wonky there momentarily, we could always toggle it on and off, and then also toggle on our just fancy blinking lights that we have, and what ship doesn't want blinking lights? Uh, but yeah, that should be it for today on this one. I can't think of anything else on here that we would need to go through. Uh, but yeah, it's just a very fun mod. I've really been enjoying myself with all these lights, and it's just useful in information to or that is easily accessible to you because it's visually there you know oh crap I'm I've got that turned on or oh crap my batteries are low or hey why is there a pilot inside the science processing unit all good things to know and good to have those visual indicators for so if you'd like to try this mod for yourself you can take a look at the link in the description as always and uh, yeah I hope you have enjoyed this episode today and of course that you do come back for the next one. Hopefully, we'll be looking at yet another wonderful mod. But until that time, thank you for watching, and as always, have a good one.